No, okay, best strategy. Uh, as you're aware, the House and Senate have recently passed legislation that made changes to the pension system for new hires, and uh, I believe that was a step in the right direction. Uh, I also believe the current system is unsustainable, and we have to make more changes, uh, more changes for new hires to create a system more like the benefit packages that are offered by in the private sector. And uh, I am interested in looking at defined contribution plans rather than rather than defined benefit plans for new hires. I think that uh, employees may enjoy the opportunity to invest some of their own money and also have something that they're able to take with them to a new career if they decide to explore other opportunities. Uh, with that said, I know the teacher's retirement system is a different system, and uh, this past session, the Senate passed a bill that helped the financial stability of that system as well. Uh, what basically happened is the local, local districts agreed to kick in more money into them. But I think that we need to step back and see how those changes affect that before we make any more changes. Uh, I also like to address legislative pensions, if I may. Uh, in mm -hmm. this session, the Senate passed a piece of legislation that closed pension loopholes for uh, legislators and stopped them from receiving uh, lucrative benefits at taxpayer expense. Uh, that's Senate Bill 51. And specifically, the bill set out to close a loophole that allowed legislators to get a full-time retirement benefit if they moved to a judgeship or an executive branch job even if it was just a few years and the majority of their service was spent at the part-time lower salary. And uh, this bill would have saved hundred thousands of dollars on its own. Uh, this bill died in the state uh, House State Government Committee. My opponent is the chair of the State Government Committee. Uh, I have signed on to the commitment to Kentucky which would uh, close these loopholes and I think it's important that they are I think it's important that it remains a service. If you're gonna call it a service to your community, it should be a service, and I have a hard time deeming myself as serving somebody when I'm paid well for it. Okay. To um, back up to the, the public employees benefits plan, um, you had said that, that you'd consider a, a moving towards a defined contribution plan as opposed to a defined benefit plan, but um, would you, and I think you, you've said you wouldn't make any changes to the benefits packages that um, are currently in place for current employees, this would just apply to No, and I don't think that's fair, and I think that, I, I said I'm willing to look at them. I, I'm, I personally will not participate in the state pension system, and that's just, that's a personal choice, and because I intend to be part of the solution rather than the problem, but I believe that it's possible to make these plans solvent simply by prior prioritizing spending. And that can only come from greater accountability and openness in government, which is some other initiative. So I'm willing to look at, yes, adding more, making it more of a defined contribution kind of plan, but I also think everything we're gonna talk about in this interview, uh, the core of almost every problem we talk about today in our Commonwealth is that we've been subjected to policies of borrow and spend and raising taxes and running us into the red, and it's time to change that. Part of um, part of, of making the the public pension um, system whole for, for current employees um, requires the uh, the legislature to increase its contribution into that system after years of of underfunding. How do you propose uh, addressing that increase in cost? Because that, you know, that's going to, to be hundreds of millions of dollars more in the coming years. I think that's part of, I know we'll, we'll get around to budget issues, but I think that's part of making the budget system more open and accountable. I think that uh, there are bills that are being presented, bills that should be passed that require these expenditures to come before public committees, to come be posted online, and I think and I think I know in my heart that there's enough waste out there that can be eliminated, enough redundancies that can be eliminated, and we can be efficient enough to fund these programs at state, at current levels. Okay. 